so um if you're having one of those days where you feel like you're just spinning your wheels and not accomplishing much or you're wondering why am i bothering doing the something if you feel like you're constantly hitting your head against a wall um this poem uh always comes to me when i have those kinds of days so this is by ralph waldo emerson um and what is success what is success to laugh often and much to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children, to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has breathed easier because you have lived. This is to have succeeded. So let's sit up straight and tall and have a moment to drop your awareness, your attention down into the body. So whatever you're meeting with in your mind right now, or you're meeting with in your body right now. Let's see if we can seek some ease, some peace. Come into the presence of this moment. Soften the muscles of your face as best as you can. Relaxing through your eyes. Relaxing through your jaw. Taking your time to feel your spine and the way it is supported. Do you feel grounded through your pelvis and your legs? Pay attention to the way you are breathing. Is there some part of you that can surrender a little bit more here, some place on your skin that can soften, some way that the breath can ease? And as you're ready, place your hands together at your heart and find your way into a bow. Bow into yourself, center, your attention and create an intention for your practice. All right, let's go ahead and release and come on to your back. All right, so as you find your way onto your mat, let's enjoy. I don't know what your morning has held for you whether you've slept well or not, you know, what kind of needs you have in your body, but ask yourself that question right now. And one of the beauties of practicing at home is you can go down any path you want without feeling uncomfortable that you're disrupting the class. So remember that this is your practice and anything you want to do that's different from what I'm teaching is totally fine. So bring yourself into the spaciousness of your body Reach your arms overhead, maybe stretch the right and the left and the right and the left. Just come into that awakening of the thoracic spine and the shoulders. All right, and then when you're ready, go ahead and bring your knees into your chest. And let's just rock a moment here, left and right. Just feeling that sense of softness come over you. And then let's circle the knees, kind of rolling through in one direction. 
and then rolling in another direction. And then let's open up the knees away from the midline and then bring them back toward the midline. Just feeling your way into what the range of motion of your hip joints is this morning. And then the right knee into the chest and left leg comes long on the ground. And feel free to move around, roll through your ankles and wiggle through your toes, feeling into that state of uh, openness. Let's switch sides. Left knee comes into the chest, right leg long on the floor, and feel your toes, your feet, all the bones of your feet, your ankles, everything loosening and opening, moving. And then spread your limbs out wide, stretch open into space, reach through your arms, reach through your legs. And then as you're ready, exhale and draw your knees and chin up a couple more times. Inhale to open big and wide. And then exhale, draw it in. Open, spacious. Exhale, drag it in. Let's get, put your feet back down onto the ground. Let's cross your right thigh over your left thigh and draw your knees into your chest. Just get a little bit of an awakening across your hip. Feel your spine get longer. Try to dip the bottom tip of your tailbone down toward the ground. Relax the base of your skull, the back of your head. And then unwind the legs and change sides. Cross left thigh over right thigh and draw your knees into your chest. Okay, so feeling into the reach through your spine, dip the tailbone so that you have a nice curve in your lumbar spine. Find your breath. All right, and then put your feet down onto the ground, a little wider than your hips, perhaps. And let's just start rocking left and right. We're going to move into some twisting today. We're going to do, a, you know, nothing too extreme, but a little twist focus in our practice. So let's just start feeling how your spine is when you rock from side to side. This isn't, you know, a, a deep, intense twist, but we start to feel um, a little bit of change versus other movements in the spine. And then we're going to roll all the way over onto our right side. You can support underneath your head if you want. Stack your knees, stack your ankles. Palms are together. Go ahead and take a deep breath. For this moment, try to keep your knees stacked. So you're not going to go very far with the thoracic spine. Your hand won't touch the ground if your knees stay together. And then come back. And now let's slide the knees apart a little bit and let the torso move more so you can turn your head and maybe even let the back of your head touch onto the ground. Or yeah, back of your hand touch onto the ground. And then back up. And let's feel the difference. Bring the knees together, keep them there so the pelvis is neutral. Open up only where your thoracic spine will go while keeping the pelvis neutral. And then come back, palm together. And then one more time, slide the knees apart, open up through the thoracic spine, feel the hand come down to the ground, turn your head, and then come back. Okay, we're going to switch to the other side. So rolling over to the left. Okay, palms are together. You can always support underneath your head if you need. Keep the knees snug up against each other and open up only where your thoracic spine is allowed to go while keeping a neutral pelvis. And then hands coming back to touch. Now let the knees slide away from each other. You can open more deeply now, back of the hand coming down onto the ground. Okay, close your butt. Palms come together. Bring the knees to touch. Now let them move. Open up across your chest. Notice how much your thoracic spine mobility um, increases when you let your pelvis and your spine go in the same direction. So now open up. Let the knees move away from each other. Turn your head. And then come back and bring your hands to touch. Go ahead and come back onto your back and grab your strap. Okay. All right, so we're lying on the ground. Right knee into the chest. Your left leg can be on the floor or your left uh, foot can be on the floor, whichever feels best for 
a neutral pelvis for you. Reach up through your foot and come into um, Supta Padagastasana. This is one of my favorite sequences when you're having one of those days where um, maybe you're, you're having trouble kind of falling into um, deep work of your practice. You need a little bit more rest. Sometimes staying on our back for just a little bit longer can help coax us into our practice. It's also a wonderful way to just feel into the sensation of stretching your hamstring, your calf, and your glutes. So let's notice the feedback from the floor, reaching your spine. It's easier to keep our spine in a neutral place when our spine is down on the ground versus when we're sitting up and stretching our hamstring. So let's enjoy all that natural space. Move your right hip away from the shoulder and drop your right hip down into the ground. Stretch up through your foot and you can feel free to point your toes toward the sky and then flex your toes. You can hook the strap around your heel so you can get that sense that you can open up all the little nooks and crannies of your calf and your Achilles. All right, now we're going to take the right leg into the right hand, the strap into the right hand, and we're gonna take the right leg out to the right. Now I have my left knee bent, you might also, you might have your left leg straight on the ground. So find which way feels best to you. If your knee is bent and your foot is on the floor and you feel like you're listing over to the right, you can always open your left knee out to the left a little bit like a butterfly to feel the sense of balance across your sacrum again. All right, so reach into the length of the spine no matter what you're doing with your left leg. The spine stays spacious. Notice your right knee. Try not to sink and lock, but have a slight micro bend in there and then press through your foot. Can you externally rotate the femur bone deeply in the hip socket? Okay, let's lift that leg straight back up in the air. Take the strap into the left hand. We're gonna cross the right leg over to the left. So you don't have to go really far. You don't have to turn this into a spinal twist. By all means, you can if you want to, but see if you can at first anyway, get the sense of the outer hip stretching. So that we're you know, opening up the muscles from your sacrum to your hip joint a little bit more. Stretch through your foot, so active through the big toe and the inner heel. You can put your right hand in the right hip crease if you want to press it down and get a little more space, a little gap in that hip joint. How's your breathing? All right, and then lift that leg up in the air. Let's join the left foot with the right foot. You might notice a big difference between your two sides, having stretched the right and not the left yet. And let's have a moment of flexing and pointing your feet. So that you feel into um, a little bit of range of motion in your ankles, so important doesn't matter what you do throughout the day. If you're moving your body, chances are you're moving your ankles. So let's just enjoy a little mobility there. And take the right foot out of the strap and keep the left foot in the strap. All right, so feel free to move again, flexing and pointing this foot independently if you want. Decide whether or not you want your right foot on the ground or your right leg on the ground. Whatever works for you is great. And so feel that the stretch travels up through your hamstrings, even into your glutes. You might even feel it through the whole backside of your spine. Just feel into the fullness of the stretch that's available to you right now. Breathe your way here. Let the shoulders melt and the head melt into the ground. Sometimes holding some static postures and stretching can be a really nice thing for the body. All right, let's open up the leg, the left leg out to the left. Feel free to keep your right leg grounded. You can also bend your right knee. You can open up your right knee out to the side a bit if you want. So just find the pathway that supports some balance across your pelvis. Enjoy the stretch in your inner thigh, the inner hamstrings. We're not locking and leaning into the knee joint. So to have a little uh, bend in there, a little tiny micro bend in that knee. So we're not stressing the tendons of those big inner thigh muscles. 
then come back up, left foot back into the air, switch the strap over to the right hand and cross the left leg over to right. Feel your left hip move away from your shoulder. You can even stick your heel of your left hand right at the head of your femur bone and press away. Uh, for some people, this feels really good to have a little, little space in that hip joint. Uh, it can enhance the stretch that you're feeling as well. So just notice if that's something that's good for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you'd rather just rest the left hand. Stretch all the way through the left big toe and the inner heel instead of letting your foot collapse. Okay. One more time, bringing that leg up. And now we're going to lower the leg down to the ground. So before we move anywhere else, just notice what your legs feel like right now. Just, is the back of your legs from your heels to your sit bones uh, alive? Do you have any extra awareness in the back side of your body? And then let's open to a starfish one more time. Spread your limbs, take a deep breath. Wiggle your fingers and toes and then knees into your chest. Roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Right, so uh, enjoy. This is such a nice posture, cat cow, something fairly simple. Um, it doesn't always feel so simple if your back is hurting. So just go where your body is saying go today. If there's a good range of motion available, great. And if there's only a little bit of range of motion available, work with what you have. Okay, right, so feel free to move your hips around, you can kind of sway from side to side or do some circling and swirling. Just find your way to what's available. And then eventually find your way down to child's pose. All right, so walk your hands. I'm rocking a little bit left and right. That's what feels good for me. You do you, maybe stillness feels good for you. Stretch your hands out there and feel the length through your shoulders. And we're going to open up to one side. So walk hands over to the right side of your mat and open up the left rib cage. Drop some weight in your hips and relax your skull. So the warm up that we, you know, have little tweaks in here and there, but that we almost always do is yes, it's warming our body up, but it's a practice in and of itself, kind of touching into all, go the other side, into all the various little places in your body, saying good morning or good afternoon, saying hello, letting yourself open slowly. Let your breath travel into all the sensations that you're feeling. And then come back to center, come up onto all fours and move your spine about again. Okay, inhale, left arm, lifting all the way to the sky. Take that shoulder underneath and twist, breathing well. So just notice what's available in the thoracic spine right now for twisting. Breathing deeply. All right, and then come on out of that pose. Reaching that arm to the sky, hand comes down onto the ground, change sides, other arm lifting to the sky, take that right arm underneath, breathing deeply, breathing well. Reach that arm all the way back up. Lifting to the sky again, hand down onto the ground. Okay, take your right foot straight back behind you. Curl your toes under one more time, a good calf stretch. And then we're gonna cross that foot over the other leg to the left side of our mat. Open up the breath and then turn and look out over your foot, just feeling a little bit of a stretch in your quadratus lumborum, your side muscles, your obliques, just letting these open up a little bit. Breathe deeply and then come back to center, switch sides. Left foot curls back, lengthen through your spine. Give the calf a nice moment and then cross it over to the other side of your mat. 
turn and look out over that uh, left foot on the right side of your mat. Square hips, square shoulders. Breathe into the sideways. And then come back to center and ch find child's pose. Notice neutrality. Just let your low back soften into neutrality. And then when you're ready, you can lift your way into dog pose. Stand through your spine here. Curl your, <clears throat> um, don't curl, but just spread your toes once you're up there as best as you can. You can pedal, you know, you can drop one heel down and then the other. You can move weight into one hand and then the other. Just find your way into opening the body. Okay. And after a little bit of movement, just enjoy what's here. So what's available to you today? Do you need to bend your knees a lot? Do you want to try to straighten your legs a little bit more? How about your hands? Are you even weighted? Can you feel the ground at the base of the index finger? Is your neck loose? Do you, are you making sure that you're holding uh, your strength from muscles that are sound instead of muscles that just really don't necessarily have to work like your neck? We always want to use our neck, but we don't have to. Walk your feet forward and come into Utsanasana. So maybe this deep forward fold is a little easier after doing some of the hamstring stretches we've already done. So just notice what's available, relax your neck. Feel free to shake your tail, drop your head, let things loosen up. You can even move your trunk from side to side, bearing weight into one foot and then the other. And as you're ready, come to a halfway lift. The spine gets longer, stretch through space, breathe deeply, and then exhale and fold again. So just feel that sense that you can relax and eat, find E. Inhale for a halfway lift, stretch the backs of the legs fully, the spine stays long, and relax again. Ground through the four corners of each foot. Drop your seat and lift your chest and rise on up, okay? So bring your arms to the sky, open your chest, lean back. Maybe that feels nice. And let's cactus open the arms and feel a good awakening in the thoracic spine. Okay. Now bring your hands, well, just relax them down for a moment. Give them a good shake. And then we're going to bring our hands and interlace our hands behind our head. Take your feet a little wider apart than you, you know, sometimes do. So wider than your hips. And we're just going to, this is an unusual twist. We don't usually use, do this. I want you to be very mindful of your neck. So relax your base of, skull, base of your skull against your hands. And we're just going to twist in a kind of strange way. Let your neck be as neutral as possible. And then release the hands and let them swing. And notice the difference when we have more mobility, what's available. Let your knee bend. You can straighten the other one. You can keep your legs straight, whatever feels good. But let the pelvis move. We're not trying to lock out our hips here. Just getting free through the thoracic spine. Okay, take your legs a little bit wider. We're going to kind of lean into one side and lean into the other side. Now we're gonna add some arms to so swinging up. The other side, swinging up. You can turn if you feel like you need more grip under your feet. Turn sideways on your mat if you lost your mat. And stay in a low goddessy squat. Open up through your chest. Find your breath, ground your feet, breathing deeply. And then push off your legs and rise back up. Heel toe your feet in. If you turn sideways on your mat, turn back forward and come back to dog pose. Standing through the spine, find your breath. Inhale, come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady, feel the integration into the core of the body. 
So much of the time when we're twisting, we really need our obliques to be alive and well. So we're gonna turn them on in a moment a little bit more. Find the floor. Inhale, cobra pose. Elbows stay bent. Exhale, coming down. Take your arms wide out in front of you. Stretch through your body. Lengthen through your legs. Open up through your chest. And then melt. And find your way. Come back up onto all fours. Two hands on the ground. Reach your left leg straight back behind you. Okay, now on our right knee. We're gonna bring the knee to our armpit and look out over our knee and then back to center. Again, exhale, crunch into that side. Inhale, back. Exhale. Inhale, straighten the leg. Twice more. Once more. Bring that leg behind you, place the knee down. Feel free to shake your wrists. So be very mindful of how you're weight bearing. And always remember, you can bring your forearms on blocks if your wrists are unhappy or you can take fists on the ground. So finding ways for your hands to be happy when you're weight bearing, stretch that right leg straight back behind you. Integrate into your core, take a deep breath in, exhale, knee comes to the armpit, turn and look out at your knee. Inhale, straight back, head back in line. Exhale, knee in. Inhale, leg goes back, spine is straight. Exhale, two more. One more. Stretch that leg back. Child's pose, and some ease. We're gonna flip over onto our back. And just do a little bit of core work before we get up and start with some standing poses. Okay, so um, we're gonna take our hands behind our head and lift our legs straight up in the air. So hopefully your hamstrings are nice and open for this after what we did earlier. Take a deep breath in. We're gonna drop the right leg. Lift the left, uh, sorry, the right chest toward the left knee. Inhale, bring the right leg back up, chest down. Drop left leg, left chest moves toward right knee. So this is the fullness and you're not touching the ground with your foot. If this is too much, you can bend your knee and do this with your knees bent instead of with your legs straight. So just waking up the twisting capacity of our, of our oblique muscles. Make sure you're breathing. Relax your head, let it rest in your hands. Now make sure you finish with the left leg. I think that's where we, where we need to finish, left leg coming down. All right, and then bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit. Okay, relax your feet down onto the ground. Rest for a moment. We're going to do these sit-ups in a specific way. So interlace your fingers the opposite way now behind your head, so it feels a little weird. We're gonna keep our feet on the ground, knees bent. We're gonna lift our chest off the floor, but the bottom tips of our shoulder blades are staying down on the ground. Relax your head and your hands. Let your head rest as best as you can. And then we're gonna drop the elbow, left elbow toward left side. Keep dropping the head and the hands, back to center and over to the right. Now you don't have to go very far for this. The most important thing I want you to do is continue breathing and rest the head. So just go wherever your body allows. You can keep your elbows kind of wide. The elbows are dropping toward the hip. Make sure you're breathing. Keep resting the head. The bottom tips of the shoulder blades are on the ground. All right, and then relax once you do both sides. And rest for a moment. 
All right, heels into the ground. Lift up into a bridge. Since we're here, we might as well. Keep the back of the neck as relaxed as you can. Press your arms into the earth. Press your feet evenly into the ground. Big belly breaths. Let your rib cage flare and open. All right, relax and melt your pelvis down onto the ground. Windshield wiper your knees left and right. One last thing to do. I know we're spending a lot of time on the ground today. I hope that's okay. One last thing to do before we get up. We're going to lie on our right side. Okay. All right. Take your left hand and put it to the top of your head. So this is not necessarily just for your obliques, but for your quadratus lumborum, the deep low back muscle, to strengthen it as well. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, pick up your feet and your head, and then inhale to drop it down. So our knees are staying together and on the ground. Exhale to lift, inhale to come down, which is usually counterintuitive to how we want to breathe. Normally when we want to lift, we want to inhale. So just see if you can kind of resist that urge and try to find the exhale as you're lifting. The neck is neutral. Try not to crank on your head. That's why our hand is there to keep us fairly neutral in our neck. Let's do one more. And then relax. Roll over onto your back. And we're going to come to the other side. Okay. So lying on our left side now. You can support underneath your head if you need to with a blanket or anything that you have. Right hand, fingertips on this on the crown of the head. Your knees are bent and together your hips are flexed. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, feet and chest lift. As you drop down, inhale. Knees stay on the ground. Exhale as you lift, feet and chest. All right, keep your neck as neutral as possible. All right, relax and come back onto your back. Feet on the ground, just met, let uh, your neck and head melt into the floor. And let's turn our head left and right. And just have a moment to release any tension through your neck that might have crept in. We're going to roll over onto our side and find our way back up. Okay. All right. So let's come to dog pose. Breathing well. Feel into the length of your body. Extending through your spine. Heart lifting toward the pelvis. Find that sense of symmetry. Open up the legs. And then walk your feet forward and come into Uttanasana. Relax your head. Halfway lift. And then exhale and melt again. Step your left foot back. Right foot is coming forward. If you want to put your hands on blocks, great. And let's start moving through some range of motion. Exhale. Straighten your leg, maybe. Maybe you want to inhale there. It doesn't really matter. Just keep yourself breathing. Notice if you have a little bit more available, and since we've done a lot already to stretch the hamstrings. And then find your way into a crescent lunge, rising on up. Maybe your arms come up, maybe your arms come out, maybe you keep your hands down. So just find the pathway that's right for right this moment for you. Breathing deeply. And we're going to turn this into a twist. So bring the uh, left hand down onto the ground or a block wherever you go and reach the other arm up in the air. Shoulders away from the ears. See if you can keep working with that back leg, stretching it long, lifting the thigh. And then bring your hand down onto the ground. Back foot comes forward, fold. 
halfway lift. Open up in symmetry, the backs of your legs. Relax down again. Step your other foot back. So now our left foot is in front. Open up through your spine, a lunge. Check in with your breathing. And then let's begin to bend and straighten the front knee. Stay with your breath. You can move slowly or quickly. What's available? Can you keep your neck as relaxed as you can? Find your lunge, ground yourself, rise up. Bring your arms wherever they feel most supportive of your breath, as well as that just general sense. This is such a beautiful welcome to the day. Bring yourself into the day. Keep your heart open through the day kind of pose. So that's wherever your arms find that. So sometimes that might mean down or out wide. It doesn't have to be reaching straight up in the air. We're going to turn this pose into a twist. So bring your right hand down onto a block or the ground and reach your other arm up in the air. Breathing deeply. Full inhales, full exhales. Hand come back down. Walk your feet back together. Uttanasana, halfway lift. Spine grows again. Now either touch your toes for a chair pose or stick a block between your thighs if, you're, if that's your preferred way for a chair pose. We're gonna find our way. All right, so squat down for a moment. Just let your legs start to feel. You can have a gentle rocking or bouncing here. Not enough where you're feeling um, strained, but just so that you can drop your center of gravity, your weight low. Okay. Reach the arms, find some stillness. Thigh bones move back. We're gonna twist here. Inhale, exhale, twisting to the right. Arms come out wide. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale to the other side. One more time, each side. Notice what the thoracic spine has available to it. Back to the chair and then come up to stand. If you have a block like me, take it out and bring your hands down onto the blocks. Right foot forward, left foot is back, but we're in a much shorter stance than a lunge. So pyramid pose, Parsvottanasana legs. Extend through the spine here. Root through the front big toe as you pull the hip back. Inner thighs rolling back, sit bones get wide and then come up to stand. Now we're gonna do revolved triangle pose. And a lot of times when we come into this posture, if we're super low, um, we, it can inhibit our ability to keep the spine spacious and the twist moving through our thorax well. So one of the ways to keep twists healthy for your vertebrae and for your discs is to not smush and round the spine. If we keep elongated, there's so much more room to twist from and we can use our muscles instead of just cranking on bones. So find the length of your spine, reach through your crown, open your chest, come forward a little bit. We're gonna bring either a hand on one block or maybe even on two blocks. Our left hand comes on the blocks. Before you start twisting, elongate the spine again, ground through your feet, the front big toe is rooting, inner thigh rolling back, hip is back, Keep extending the spine, and then as you're ready, twist open. The hand can come up in the air. Now, if you want to go, if you want to get there, you're like, oh, I have a little more to give. You can lower the block or blocks. The goal here is to keep the spine spacious, to stay grounded in the legs, to let the twist happen on the exhales with the strength of our obliques. And then relax. Walk the back foot forward. Fold in Uttanasana. Let your knees bend. Relax your head. Our neck often takes some tension, especially when we're trying to look up toward the sky in those twists. 
So notice if your neck feels any tension, halfway lift, put your hands under the blocks so that you have a lot of space here. Hands are under shoulders instead of by your feet. So you can feel the full length of your spine, round four corners of your feet here, soften the knees a little bit, lift the sit bones, and imagine a little bit of an inner spiral of your thighs, not enough to knock knee yourself, but enough to let the feeling that your inner thighs can roll back a bit. And then relax, bend your knees and come up to stand. Left foot is forward, right foot is back. Okay, so this is Parsvo Tonasana legs, pyramid pose legs. We're not in a long stand. You can always take the left foot out to the left more if you need a wider stance, either for balance or for spaciousness for breath or for spaciousness in your pelvis. Let's come rest our hands down on the block very lightly. So we're not leaning and falling. We're moving into our legs. So root into your legs, reach that front hip, your left hip back, inner spiral of the thighs, relax your neck, make contact with your big toe mound and keep it there. That's your anchor point. So you can reach the hip back from that anchor point. And then rise all the way back up. Find your breath. Let's lift the right arm in the air. We're gonna bring our hand forward, place it onto a block, or maybe you need two blocks. Um, a rare bird to be able to put your hand comfortably on the ground with your spine really spacious. So don't hesitate to use props for a pose that really works with um, you know, a vulnerability in our spine. So we wanna create as much space as we can. So ground your legs, root the big toe, pull the hip back, inner thigh is rolling back. Ever so slightly lift the tail so that you feel like you're in a slight pelvic tilt, you know, anterior tilt, just so that you protect yourself from rounding the back. We don't wanna round the back. We wanna feel length and space. Keep the anchor point to the big toe, pull the hip back, start to twist from that space. Our twist comes from our obliques. It comes from our exhales. Raise your arm in the air. Maybe your head follows. Maybe your head likes to be neutral. Maybe your head likes to look down at that big toe, big toe rooting mound. Find the length of your spine. Keep moving your hip back. Open yourself up. How's your breath? Relax, hands down onto the ground. Dog pose with your feet really, really wide. So take a wide stance so that your belly has some space. You can breathe super deep into the pelvis. Enjoy the symmetry. And then place your feet closer, come forward into a plank. Integrate, hold yourself steady. Big, beautiful breath in and out. Integrate into your core. And put your knees down to support on the way down if you need. Roll the shoulders. Okay. And we're going to lift up into a cobra. And then come down. Take your legs wide, so curl your toes under. Lift your kneecaps so your whole leg can lift and move outward so your toes touch the edges of your mat. And we're going to lift up into a wide cobra here. And then relax. Now, if you can, put your hands underneath your forehead and lift just your legs. And then melt. Bring your knees hip width apart and rock left and right. All right, come up on tall fours, swish your spine about. Find child's pose when you're ready. Take some breaths here. Enjoy your body, enjoy your breathing. Okay. All right, we're going to come on up and grab a blanket. My blanket's folded in a weird way, so I'm refolding it here. Um, and we're going to sit on the edge of the blanket. Okay, so you have some height underneath you. Okay. 
Okay, let's stretch the right leg straight out and lift up through your spine. Tuck your left foot close in. Grab your knee and just enjoy a little squeeze in and the spine lifting. We're gonna open twist here. So take your left leg a little bit out so it's not touching your right leg. Okay, and then lift your left arm and bring your elbow to the inside of the knee, hand behind your back to support the twist. There's many ways of twisting the body, so many ways of twisting the body. Come back to center. We're going to change sides. So bring your right foot in. So we're not touching our legs. Our right foot is in line with our sit bone. Our left leg is in line with our it's sit bone. So we're going to take the left hand behind you to support that lift of the spine. Because remember, whenever we're twisting, we want to come from a spacious spine. Reach the right arm up, bring it to the inside of the right knee, and start to twist open. Use your breath to twist instead of just pressing bone on bone. Come back to center, soles of the feet together. Hands behind you, we're still on the edge of that blanket. Open the chest, pull your knees down, your, you can even pull your big toes away from each other. Baddha Konasana. Enjoy the symmetry across your pelvis. Relax and bring your knees into your chest. Soften. You can round your back now a bit. Soften into the posture. All right. Come back up one more time. Baddha Konasana, hands behind you. Open up the knees, lift the chest. you can choose. We have some choices to be had. So um, do you want to do reverse pigeon pose, um, reverse eagle legs pose, or pigeon pose? So uh, decide, you know, whether you want to be on your back with either crossing thigh over thigh or right foot over left knee, or maybe you want to come into a full Pigeon pose with your body supported on a blanket, your head supported on a block, no support, whatever it is that your body um, needs for this posture. Okay, so choose a pathway to stretch your hips, um, whichever is a happy place for your body. And once you get into the posture, melt here, let your body relax. Notice that you know we don't have to go into extreme ranges of motion in order to feel really free in our body. And often when we move through our practice, we notice that we suddenly have more range of motion, that our practice offers us more depth as we go. Melt your skull, your shoulders, your belly, your diaphragm. Let's find our way to the other side, which could mean the same pose. It could mean a different pose than the pose you're in. So you have choices. You always have choices. Every day is a different choice that you're making for your body. Follow your breath. So if your breath can take you here, that's great. If your breath is not with you, change something. Make sure you feel able to be supported. You should not have to feel like you have to tense and grip to hold yourself in place. And your breath as deep and slow as you can find. The 
Is there places in your body, or are there places in your body that can rest? How about your hands, if you're not holding your legs? How about your skull, your face? Let the breath, let the diaphragm relax enough for the breath to move easily and freely. Find your way out of this posture and take the last minute before Shavasana to find a pathway that your body needs right now. Everybody's different. Every day is different. So, you know, what is it? If you're just finding yourself in neutral territory for a moment, ask your body what else is needed before you can rest. Is there any part of your body that's like, oh, you didn't touch into there. I'd like to feel there, or I need some release here. So try to listen instead of just doing what you think you should do. Um, there's, there's so much you could do. So listen to the body and follow its, its advice. Make sure you're breathing. If something is asymmetrical, make sure you have time to do um, both sides. Whenever you're ready to find your way into Shavasana, if you need support underneath your knees or underneath your head or something covering your eyes, whatever it is that your body's asking for, take your time and settle into your Shavasana. This is a gift. It's a gift of our presence. Drop in.
letting out and full deep exhale, letting the body go. Melt your skull. Breathe in so much more. Let's reach and stretch and move in any way that is best for you. Eventually, you're going to find your way onto your side. Really bring yourself upright to sit. And once you're there, bring your hands together. Take a deep breath. Do you feel any better having practiced? Is there a part of you that feels more open or free? Is your mind more settled? Is your breath open? And what have you noticed? Let's offer gratitude to you showing up to practice, and the practice itself. And then let's offer this energy sharing the merits of your practice with another, sending your love and care to someone who could use some uplifting. And even the simple task, not a task, but simple experience of sending your energy to another is making the world a slightly better place. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.